In today's topic, I want to address some general questions about JavaScript and development. These are some questions that get asked frequently and are of interest to most people learning JavaScript. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all of the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. Also, the description has a link to Patreon if you'd like to support the channel, as well as EarnScript. Now, let's jump into the questions. I thought this would be a good format for this particular video this time. Uh, this week has been a bit crazy, both personally and professionally. Personally, I sent my youngest son off on a two-year mission for a church, and professionally, there's just been a lot of projects, and so I thought a Q&A where I address some of the questions that I get asked, general questions about JavaScript that I get asked, would be a good format. So the first question that I want to deal with is, what is the best way to learn JavaScript? Now, this is a difficult question to answer because we all learn different ways. I know how I went about learning JavaScript, but that may not be the best way for you. So let me do this. Let me suggest some of the approaches that are out there, some available approaches, and then I'll also emphasize some of the things that I think are important in the learning of JavaScript. So first, some of those approaches. Classes. Obviously, you can take live classes, although in this COVID-19 thing we're going through, it may not be the best option, but there's a lot of online classes. I have a lot of online classes on Udemy and other sites that uh, you could use. There are boot camps. Um, now with boot camps I think you need to be a little bit careful. At one time I think all boot camps were really trying to help students get jobs and whatnot. But they become this sort of thing where they're trying to push as many students through as possible. So you have to be really careful about which boot camps you choose. I know Colt Still, some of you may be familiar with some of the stuff he does on YouTube and other places, but Colt Stills Bootcamp, I've been really impressed with. Obviously, I haven't gone through it, but I've looked at it, and I, I like the approach they take. And so if I had to recommend one, that would probably be one that I'd recommend. And then you can, of course, learn on your own. Sometimes the danger of learning on your own, if you don't have an instructor to structure what you're learning, is that you can miss important pieces. But that's still a viable option, and you may be able to identify those pieces and be able to learn just fine on your own. Now, some of the things I think you should be doing in learning JavaScript is I think you should be working on projects. That's an important thing. Now, obviously, you need to learn new concepts about JavaScript, and you can't always be working on projects when you're learning those. But you should be working on some sort of project, whether you've got a job where you get projects from, or you make up a project, or you find projects on the internet. There's tons out there, tons of examples out there for JavaScript projects you can work on. It's just good to work on a project because then you're applying what you're learning. Another thing I think that's important is to take some time, go back to code that you've done previously and refactor it. See how you can make it better. N not only does that help you learn and apply new things you've learned about JavaScript. But when you refactor code, you're able to see better ways of doing things. And you can see it with your own code. And you see how you've improved over time as well, which can be a good thing. And then finally, I think it's important to continue to invest in your learning. So Pick a time, amount of time, or a time of day, or something like that, where you spend time increasing your skills, where you're learning to become a, a better developer. I think that's important to do. You should always be reinvesting in your skills. All right, so on to the next question. What area should I focus on? Now, this question, when it's asked, can obviously mean a lot of different things. Uh, for example, one thing it can mean is, should I focus on being a full stack developer? Should I focus on the front end, on the back end? Should I focus on specific frameworks or libraries? What should I focus on? Well, just a few comments about this. Um, I think you need to specialize. 
yes, you need to understand the things that a full stack developer would understand. But I think in today's world, it's better to specialize. So learn all that, but find where you seem to do best and specialize in that area. Focus on that area. For example, as I've worked on different projects, you find people that some people are really good at CSS. And so sometimes when there's serious CSS that needs to be done, you offload it to them. Um, backend stuff, authentication, security. Um, even some people are better at debugging. In fact, in my career, probably half of the projects that I get are really debugging projects. So I'm going into existing code and solving problems. And I seem to have a knack for that. I seem to have a knack to be able to figure things out. And so there's an area where you can specialize and you should focus on that area. I do a lot more on front end. Um, I just enjoy that more, I guess. And that's why I've focused on front end. Now, like I said, you need to understand a lot of the different areas. You can't just focus on one and ignore everything else. The focusing part is you know that area really well, but you understand a lot of the other stuff also. For example, as a front end developer, I can't just focus on JavaScript. I've got to know HTML, I've got to know CSS. I've got to know frameworks. Uh, so those are important. Hopefully that gives some, some color to maybe where you should focus, how you should approach things. So I want to follow up that question with the question, what frameworks, libraries should I learn? Well, first I want to answer that by saying, really, you need to learn JavaScript deeply. I think you need to understand JavaScript because that allows you to move from framework to framework. And libraries, JavaScript libraries come and go in popularity. Now, some of them stick around, and those are always good ones to, to know. Angular, React. I really love React, and so I've kind of focused in that area mostly. Um, but one thing that I've noticed is that there is plenty to learn about JavaScript. You can always be increasing your knowledge of JavaScript. When I started this channel uh, about four years ago, I thought, okay, I'll start by doing some general JavaScript topics. And then when I run out of JavaScript topics, I'll do videos on frameworks and things like that. Well, I never ran out of JavaScript topics. And so it kind of changed my perspective that I wanted to focus just on JavaScript on this channel. And that's mainly what I do. I mainly just focus on JavaScript because I think it's important to learn that deeply. And then it makes it so much easier to learn all the other libraries and frameworks that are out there. All right, next question. Uh, when have I learned enough so that I'm ready to apply for a job or that I'm qualified for a job? And I, I think that's the wrong way to think about it. Um, if you think you're going to need, know everything you need to know before you start a job, you're in a wrong place. That is impossible. There is so much learning that happens on the job. You just need to show that you have a good base knowledge of the things you'll need in that job and that you're willing to learn and that you can learn quickly and that you can and that you're excited about learning new things. I think that's the important things. And so when are you ready? I don't know if you're ever ready. Just start applying for some of those jobs if you're interested in them. All right, I wanna finish up with just a couple of questions that are more specific to uh, my channel. Um, and one is, what is the best way to consume or to view the YouTube videos that I create? And normally the, the juxtaposition that question is, well, how can I best learn JavaScript through your YouTube videos? And that's always a hard question for me to answer because I don't develop them that way. I don't develop them thinking I'm going to take someone from point zero to, uh, to 100%. Uh, that's what I do with my courses. I don't do that with my YouTube videos. I just take different topics as I see that they're needed or as they interest me or something like that. But having said that, I do try to... Uh, group my videos into playlists and so you can find the playlist on the channel and you could look at particular playlists if you're interested in learning something specific because I try to 
organize those playlists around a, a particular topic. And there is a getting started playlist as well, which I've tried to put uh, most videos that are more entry level type of videos in. So a playlist is maybe the best way to do that. And as I mentioned in the intro, on my website, I do list all over 200 now uh, tutorials and I try to group those into categories as well. So a couple of ways you can do that. Hopefully that helps somewhat. It's just a hard question to answer. Finally, another question I get frequently is what editor do you prefer? Which uh, this is a question that is bad around all the time in JavaScript. So obviously with YouTube videos, I use Sublime a lot and I've stuck with Sublime just because I want the consistency across the, the videos. And I've even done that in some of my courses as well. But I find myself in my own work, I'm using a lot more Visual Studio Code. I really love that editor and what it offers. And so I really use that a lot in my work. I use Sublime with YouTube. And I've even used Brackets. I, I enjoy Brackets as well. And the nice thing about all those is they're free. Uh, you can get them without paying a lot. So those are all good in that sense. All right, so there's a few questions, general questions about JavaScript. Hopefully those answers were helpful. Um, and as those of you know that have been on the channel for a while, I really do try to answer questions that are posted on the channel as much as I can. So you can always post questions there as well. All right, if this was helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe and remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I do try to release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.